religion. Most people believe in some higher authority, something or someone they can pray to, seeking answers to whatever it is they want. According to the Oxford Dictionary, religion is the belief in or worship of a superhuman controlling force. Now, Africa is very religious. Now, to put this into perspective, this is how Africa as a continent, in terms of religion, is compared to Europe. Clearly, many more unbelievers in Europe compared to Africa. But guys, the billion dollar question is, why are we so religious? There's something that this religion gets. Me and my people run me closer in one harmony and living together in peace. I believe in God because the setup of my birth and my family and the tradition I grew up is was just religious. I do believe in God. I, I pray to Him every single day. I tell my family, my children to pray to God every day. So when we talk religion, you know, we're talking about Christianity, we're talking about Islam, and of course, we cannot talk religion without mentioning our very own traditional indigenous religion on the continent, okay? So, where are we now? We are in Bonn, Germany, at the St. Marian Church here. So we have to choose somewhere to talk about. And my panel have agreed for us to meet here. I'm Rabiu Al Hassan, I'm from Ghana, and I'm Muslim. And I believe religion is at the core of who I am. I'm Benita van Eysen, I come from South Africa. I um, was raised a Catholic. I put it behind me at the age of 14, uh, and I consider myself a religious today. My name is Father Steri. I come from Tanzania. I was born in Kilimanjaro. I work in the Archdiocese of Cologne as a Catholic priest in this parish here, the parish of St. Mary and St. Servasus, here in the city of Bonn. And so guys, first question, why is Africa so religious? I guess ultimately there's no better person to talk about religion, I'd say, than, than the priest himself. What would you say, coming from your perspective, is the reason we've held on so tight to religion on the continent? Before this world made religions came to Africa, Africans were religious. It is part and parcel of our culture. Actually, this major religions came to Africa, it added on what we had. Because an African by nature is notoriously religious. Yeah, I like the way you say notoriously religious. Notoriously is, that, religious. is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. Okay. It's a good thing because religion plays a very vital role in the life of a human person. Yeah. But, but, but it can also be a bad thing. Uh, okay. because, yeah, because when you look at our current uh, predicaments, a large section of some of the most vile things that we've done across the world, also on the African continent, flows through um, the religion vessel. And people using religion to commit all sorts of atrocities. So there's a good side and there's a bad side. Mm -hmm. To add to that and to um, contradict what the Good Father is saying, I think that religions like Islam, uh, Christianity, didn't necessarily add to what was there in Africa before. I think that it sought to replace the belief system within Africa and it's done quite a bit of harm, to be honest. These people, when they came, they found us religious. Mm -hmm. The issue whether what they brought, dismantled what we had, that can be another discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need another avenue to discuss that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Talk, talking about avenues mm -hmm. to discuss, I mean, there mm -hmm. has to be a lot of avenues to discuss religion because, as you guys all know, it's such a huge topic. Yeah, it's you know? only nice to also talk to an expert of it uh, who's actually been doing a lot of research into it. Kauta uh, from University of Ghana, PhD student, but also uh, lecturing about religion. We asked her, why are we so religious? It becomes very difficult to separate religion from the everyday life of the African person. So in politics, in health, in economics, there are religious connotations in all these aspects of life. So we heard from Kauta, and uh, she basically is saying that it's so difficult to separate religion from uh, the individual's life. 
very closely knit. Is that what it is, Father? Exactly. In order to answer that question, we are supposed to know what is the aim of religion. Mm. Religion is for the salvation of the soul. Okay. When you look at a human being in his wholeness, it's made up of the soul and the body. We take care of the body, that is understandable, but when you want to take care of the soul, you have to make a leap into religion. It's all about getting the right balance, isn't it? Yeah. Then if I come in here. So is it not possible then to have good values um, without religion? I like the way Benita possible. just takes over and asks questions to the father we have here. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> this, that, this is a fire No, no, no. It is, it is, yeah. it is okay. a good one. What do you make of that? Um, in 1962 to 1965, we had the so-called Vatican Council. We discussed such issues. But we have some people who have not come across what we call Christianity, yet they live a good life. Mm -hmm. Are they in the package of salvation? The answer is yes. Okay. You are a good person, you have good values, that is your religion. It Just makes you a religious if, person. If, if I'm supposed to respond to your question, I'm sure all the religions talk about values, and I'm talking about good values. But beyond that, when we talk about salvation, life beyond what we experience here. That, here that, that also Earth. depends on if anyone believes in that in the first place. So if, if people that, believe that, that there's an that, actual world. So that really informs the mm. decisions people would take mm. as to what religions they believe in and the mm -hmm. salvation that they believe they would get after life here on Earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one thing that many people keep asking, do we even need religion? Let's go to Carter again because Carter had a very interesting point on whether we need religion or not. Yes, Africa needs religion. You take religion out of Africa and you render Africa lifeless. Religion is the identity of Africa. Very strong statement from Carter there. Take religion out of Africa and Africa is lifeless. Uh, what do you think? So, so the call to how we practice religion in Africa as Muslims, let me, let me take that perspective, is the need to answer the unknown, the need to get comfort when you are facing challenges, the need to pray to something to help come to your aid. I can understand why people would need to choose something, yeah. why, you know, but the many people who I think um, we don't know where their souls have ended up. Mm. We simply don't know. Do we have to choose, uh, Father? It's can a teaching. We, do, we, do, we, do we even have to choose? Can we just not live? I can say yes and no. Okay. There are some people who, are, who belong to a certain religion simply because they are born in a certain place. Mm. If we were to be born in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. I would have been a Muslim. Mm. But coming to the point, man is limited. A human person is limited. To support what he said. It comes at the point where you see when we stretch the human imagination, we cannot go beyond. And that's where we make a leap into religion. It sounds it for has me a like, limitation. It sounds for me like a bit of a, an excuse, the easiest excuse to when we cannot answer some questions. Then let's just find the comfort in something. And, and even finding the answer, do we really get that answer from religion? It, it, because that's where it comes to the aspect of faith. If you know what your faith by definition is, I would say yes. I think I just want to get into this. Com coming to you, Rabiu, there isn't the battle really, even within religion, finding the best religion, and this is the ultimate religion that one should be in? That, that's, that's quite interesting because it is important that you are knowledgeable about the religion you are involved in. And, and that is core with Islam, where you are told that read. Knowledge is key. And if you, are, if you are supposed to seek for knowledge as far as going to China, it is important you go there and go and seek knowledge. Know something about the other religions. Okay, I don't care. Also. I don't care. I don't care, Father. I don't care. I was mm. born into it. I'm Christian. I don't care. I don't want to be Christian. I don't want to be anything. What do you say to me? And being born there does not condition you to remain what you are. Fair enough. But I don't care. I don't it want to be It is what we call human volition. We mm -hmm. have people who are converting moving from Muslim, they are Muslims, they become Christian, mm -hmm. Christian they become. Mm -hmm. It is out of your own volition. Okay. 
Okay, if anything. I, I would say that's where interpretation comes in. The expectation is high, whether you're Muslim, Christian, Jewish, that you remain there. And breaking ranks is not easy. And it's not necessarily good for the cohesion of a community, you know, causes can mm. cause problems, mm. can cause yeah. big problems. She's, that, yeah. she's right, she's right. That's why I brought the aspect of freedom. In any religion, one must be free to believe what he or she believes. You cannot force people at a gunpoint, you have to believe. And when you do that, you water down religion completely. Uh, let's go to uh, Kautai again. What would Africa be like without religion, especially talking about the the, the major religions on the continent now, Islam, Christianity. Come to what do you think? I don't foresee Africa without religion because religion plays a very important role. Religion has created peaceful coexistence in Africa. Religion has also been the, the, the source of unification within the African context. Okay, so Kautha says she cannot foresee an Africa that is not religious. Fair enough point, or what do you see? If you ignore religion which takes care of the soul, then you leave a human person who is dismembered. Okay, Benita. Uh, I would say that uh, there certainly has been a shift in Africa where it's gone beyond the, the body and the soul, where it's about the bank balance. Uh, the father probably knows about this new prosperity gospel that has, that has come to Africa in the form of profits with private jets and, you know, goes beyond just traditional classic Islam or classic uh, Christianity. But it's important also to identify charlatans and point fingers at them for who they are. Because even in Islam, we have people who run around claiming they are Malans and a Malam is supposed to be a teacher. But these people are spiritualists or they, they inculcate some of the African traditional religion in Islam and maybe dupe people mm. and they do this in the name of Islam. We have to call these people out. True. So it's important to call important them out for food. Yes. It's a very big problem. That's why I said people who have a problem with religion, they don't have a problem with religion per se. They have a problem with the institution of religion. Mm the structures that erect a particular religion. Mm. The values which define a certain religion, they are good. But when it comes to structures which are created, of which I would say, I would support her, religion, some denominations in Africa, they have, they have been used as a tool of manipulating the poor. We have to wrap this up. Can I say one thing? You can, I was gonna can just say, everyone one? has the final, final okay. say, very briefly though, Benita. I think that uh, when it comes to religion, if we strip it down mm -hmm. to just indigenous beliefs, Africa will be okay. Uh, final words for you? In the Catholic Church, we are very clear. Fides et ratio. Faith without reason, it boils down to nothing. Okay, faith without reason boils down to nothing. That'd be your final word. I think knowledge is the, is the center of um, the Islamic religion, and it would be important for people to read and read as wide as they can to inform them and inform some of the actions they take. And that, that, would, that would make the world a better place. What we need now is to all just be able to come together as one people, because we are one people, and share love amongst ourselves. Whether you're Catholic, you're Muslim, Christian, whatever it is you are, as a people, we should be able to come together and move on. And I think that's something you would even agree to. Sure. I fully agree. Fully agree. Thank you very much, Vinita, for your time. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll do this. I'll do this. I didn't know if, past, if, if priest couldn't do this. You could, oh, good. Okay, so, so, so we're clear. Rabiu, thanks a lot for your time. Okay, so that's it. We really need your comments right below. And uh, let's find out what's on your mind, okay? Thank you, guys.